From the Dignity Health Studios at the Bakersfield Californian, this is Condors Unleashed. Rodgers with the lead pass up to Lazard. He's been out of the box. On a breakaway, Lazard in shooting. No! Headlines, highlights, coach's corner, player interview, and everything happening around Condors Town. Now in HD. Two of the most attractive men on radio. Here are the voices of the Condors, Ryan Holt and Kevin Bartle. I can't think of any better lead in that. It's great for that interest. And the way we look today is even more, more phenomenal. Special. Phenomenal. In case you can't tell, we're looking at the monitor. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Giveaway hats coming up on January the 30th. Yeah. And the Condors come back home. Connors are home for two games this weekend. Your choice of one of two styles. Yeah, oh, that's nice. That's yeah. nice. And, we, and we flipped them around, right? We The older style is on the younger broadcaster, and the younger style is on the older broadcaster. Yeah. By it. the way, I'm Ryan Holt. He's Kevin Bartle. This is Connors Unleashed. We're just bantering, Love having this. some fun. Mount Mike's Pizza is already here. Bartle set a Connors Unleashed record with two slices pre-show. I don't mess around. We also wanted to uh, give a, a stick tap as well here. Uh, our, our IFBs is what these things are called in, in your ears. We hide them. Unlike if you watch the entire, and I know you didn't, Bart's, but the entire football coverage of the last two days, Jim Nance and Phil Sims, even with black ones, so they're supposed to kind of blend in, just fully in the wrong ear. I can't even see yours. Yeah, it's Can great. Can you see mine? No, it's, it's perfect. We know what we're doing here. We might be amateurs, but we try and put on a good show. We hope you enjoy it. Thanks for... Taking your lunch hour and spending it with us, Connors Unleashed, live each and every Tuesday when we can do it. We have a, a great run of shows going on here. We're here next week as well, here the following week as well. Oh, no, we're not. We're in Utah the following week. Sorry. Yeah, don't confuse me. Yeah. I know when we get to March, get your fill now because when we get to March. Yeah, no shows. It's going to be <laughs> a rough month. February, though? Giddy up. All right. Uh, great show uh, lined up here for Condors Unleashed. We'll be speaking with the JF Wool in, in our second segment, as always. We'll, we'll take a couple of minutes with, with Coach, get his thoughts on the weekend. The Condors with a tough weekend, but, but Bart, I mean, if, if any show is realistic, it lives in reality, you know, firmly rooted in reality, it's this show. Yeah. Uh, are we hitting panic button here in Condors Unleashed? I, I think, well, we're not. No. I'm sure that some people are, but... It's four games. Like, we're going through a tough Relax, stretch. Relax, people. Aaron Rodgers said it best. What did he say? Relax. Relax. Like, I mean, what team doesn't lose four games in a row at some point during the season? It happens to everybody. Everyone. Everyone. Everybody. And, you know, hey, whatever. It'll get better. Yeah. What do you think? We're not going to make any changes? Like, we're not going to win any more games? Everyone throwing in the towel? Yeah. We're Let's all just quit. pack it in. Yeah, we're quit. Let's We've quit. We've got some numbers to throw at you. Sure, the Condors lost four in a row, but we'll tell you, we'll go inside this little this little blip on the radar. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. It's not that bad, folks. It's not that bad. Everyone, relax. I mean, don't Come get me this wrong. It's, it's not good. It's not great. We'll, we'll fix it. It's not that bad. I promise. Still in the playoffs. It's all good. Uh, also, Sebastian Sylvester will join us here at Condors and Leash. I'm looking forward to talking to Sly. He's a guy that we don't get to talk to often. He's, he's kind of quiet by nature, but... He's got his family in town here this week and uh, going to come on the show. And I think we're the funnest team in pro hockey, and he's the funnest player to watch on the funnest team in the league. No doubt about that. You can't argue that one. Erica Shelton from the Condors Community Relations Department will also join us. We'll make some picks with her. Her first appearance here at Condors. Yeah, Shell so dog. She, she's very nervous. Let's be honest. She's yeah. very nervous. I'm very nervous as well. I've been caught. Yes. In the standings. I'm nervous. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, it's great. Right. We'll, uh, we'll talk about Tippa Condor coming up February the 9th as well. She has a big role uh, to play in that. Did a lot of stuff uh, out today to get ready for Tippa Condor. Yes, we do plan things sometimes. Not this show. The show isn't planned. Tippa Condor, we, we put some planning into that. It'll be a great time. Uh, you can call 324-PUCK, 324-7825. Get your tickets now so you don't get missed out or left out, I should say, in a Tippa Condor. All right. It's time. For Holtie's Headlines! 
Well, that's what you should do. You're a professional. We're acting. Are you going to need me at all? Because I'm going to go back to the pizza. No, but I think it's inappropriate that you, and I got to talk into Michael Harper's microphone, that you had two slices pregame. That's a lie. Just tell everybody that's not true. No. There's evidence over there. No, that's one slice, and I took one bite out of it. The other slice you already ate. All right. All right, Condors, uh, over the weekend, two losses to the Colorado Eagles. You can't deny the facts. Uh, looking at some of the highlights from Friday night's uh, contest, the Condors actually uh, raced out to a 2 nothing lead in this game. It did Bakersfield. Uh, they get two goals, uh, one on the power play, and both from defensemen. Uh, Brendan Nash here from the left point, putting the Condors up one nothing, and things look good in the opening period for this Condors side. Uh, don't get me wrong, the Condors are certainly uh, had their opportunities over the weekend. Colorado, though, I, I of any team, and great that we haven't seen Colorado yet this year, of any team that has come to Bakersfield or the Condors have played, they've been the toughest matchup I think for this Condors side. Maybe not the best team in the Western Conference, but the toughest matchup for this Condors team. You know, the one thing that kept standing out in my mind is, you know, the Condors have some creative forwards, even with the Jones boys up and. Uh, it, there just wasn't really a whole lot of room out there for creating. I mean, one on one, they were very good. There was there were very few odd man rushes, and I just thought defensively, uh, they were as tough to play against as anyone we've seen this year. And the superstars were in town on Friday night, crowd of over five thousand enjoying uh, the superstars. Will Gretzky, Tim Tebow, and Snail Earnhardt Jr. And I mean, who doesn't love the superstars? It's great. Snail Earnhardt Jr. was fantastic. He was great. Tip Tebow was uh, antics during the third period as well. He hung around, stayed till the end. Well, Gretzky's still in uh, New York jersey, and it still baffles me every time I see it. Squiddy Crosby made an appearance or a check a puck in the second intermission. Squiddy never gets old either. Same antics, same stuff. He eats still a fun. guy. He eats guys. Condors uh, fell behind in this game, a 3-2, to two, ended up uh, tying up the game in the third period. Brooks to Shaber, and much needed for Chase Shaber. He's been on a little bit of a gold drought here as of late. Condors need a player like number 77 in white to step up here over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, we've, we've talked about it a lot. He's been on the cold slump. Uh, everyone knows that, but, you know, he's a good hockey player, and he's a big part of this team. So, uh, you know, here's to hoping that that goal just kind of gets him off the schneid a little. That's a nice – we talked about it on the broadcast, but that's a heck of a play from Brendan Brooks. That's a great play from Brooks. But, you know, Brooks is another one of those guys. He was pretty shut down over this weekend set, and he's a tough guy to shut down. So the Condors end up dropping both games against the Colorado Eagles at home. But let's look at some numbers. Okay, the Condors have lost four in a row. There's no denying that. Two of those games, the Condors had at least a multi-goal lead. In a, against Ontario on a Saturday night at home and on Friday night at home against the Colorado Eagles when the Condors led 2 nothing, led 3 nothing against Ontario. Three out of the four games were tied with nine minutes left. That's just the facts, folks. Certainly, the Condors didn't get a point in all four games. I'm not trying to sugarcoat stuff, but everyone just... Here's the ledge. Let's, yeah, that, let's come in. The one against on Ontario top. really is kind of the only one that gets me. I yeah. mean, you're going to lose a couple of games here and there, but you don't want to just give away points that you had. And I think that was two points in the books that the Condors should have had. Um, you know, hey, it is what it is, though. It's, it's in the books. We'll keep playing. Got a new guy in town. Maybe you'll add to the team. We'll see. The Condors, three games this week. Tomorrow night, we're down in Ontario for the second straight week. Ontario's had the entire week off, so they'll be well-rested. Then the Condors are back home Friday, Saturday nights. Utah comes to town, Bartz, and we'll talk with J.F. Wool in just a few minutes about it. Uh, that's that's a big matchup now. Four versus five here yeah. in the Western Conference and, Pacific and Division. And I don't know how it's going to look with the midweek game uh, for the Condors, but... Uh, they're going to need to win both of those games. I mean, you want to win both of those games. Yeah. Utah's the team that's right behind them in the standings, and no need to make things any easier for your opposition. Between your uh, your flat bill hat and your uh, your patches on your elbows and your Reg Dunlop coat, you're having a heck of a fashion day today. Should I put the coat back on? <sighs> I actually, I, I I I didn't want to wear the hat, yeah. but I, it's kind of growing on me. I yeah, it, it works. I think the beard makes it work for you. I you look it, very Bakersfield. I think it goes well with the sweater. I mean, navy blue and black, I don't know. But, I mean, I suppose it looks okay. 
Looks good on right, you, Moving though. on. But it looks good on moving you, though. Moving on. Uh, the Condors, uh, two games this weekend, as we mentioned, Friday and Saturday night. Friday night, big game. Daniel Cormier will be here. He's the guy featured right over my left shoulder. He could whoop Bartle. I can't wait until he punches. About it. I can't wait until he punches you right in the face. We got some highlights from uh, Daniel Cormier as well. Uh, I mean, I, he knocked a guy out. Uh, Daniel Cormier, fifteen and one, UFC light heavyweight contender. He's ranked at number three in the light heavyweight division. He just lost to, to John Jones, who's uh, the top pound for pound ranking ranked fighter in the UFC. Uh, lost that in a five round decision for the belt uh, at MGM Grand uh, last week. So. Cormier won't have the belt to bring it to Condor's Town, but, I mean, we saw him last year. He's a great guy off the ice, great guy on the ice, and he even did an appearance without a game last year when Las Vegas was canceled. And looking forward to, to Daniel Cormier coming back to Bakersfield. Stop that video. Like, stop. <laughs> I'm, I'm in an extreme Bartle pain loves, right Bartle now loves, watching that. Bartle loves a lot of things. UFC is not one of the things yeah. that Bartle likes. I, it's okay other than they straddle the guy on, his, on the mat and pound him in the face move. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, straight up, I mean, this guy's a bad man. He's I mean, 35, look at, too. Look at him punching guys. Does he look 35 to you? No, nah, he's... You're 40. Yeah. He's a tank. He's a tank. And he's a good guy. And he had a lot of... He actually had a lot of fun when he came to the game. We're, we're happy to have him come back this season. Yeah, looking forward to Daniel Cormier coming back to Condors Town again Friday night. You get your pictures, autographs so with Cormier at the game. Uh, he'll be there from uh, puck drop until the end of the game. So uh, the earlier you arrive in Condor's Town, the better of a chance you have of getting in the line quicker. Again, there's only one Daniel Cormier and there's five, 6,000 fans. So get there as early as possible. That's my recommendation. Saturday night, the Condors host a Frozen Night and the uh, meet and greet with the Frozen characters sold out. You can't get into the meet and greet. That's pregame, though. You can uh, take pictures uh, during the game with Anna, Elsa, and Kristoff and let it go. The Let game, it go, Bart. The game is not sold out. The game's not sold out. Plenty of tickets available for the game on a Saturday night. Come on out, and we'll have uh, the different characters at different points of the concourse uh, so that you can alleviate the lines a little bit. It's a nice little idea from the Condors. Alleviate the lines a little bit. One apprentice in one area, another apprentice in another area. Kristoff will be hanging out as well, uh, so you can get your pictures taken. Bring the kids out. Uh, I mean, if the kids find out that there was a frozen night and you don't bring them... Oh, they're not going to be happy. Not going to be happy. <laughs> they're not going to be happy. Not going to be happy. For those uh, folks who are the one of the lucky ones uh, to, who are able to purchase the tickets for the uh, meet and greet from 5 to 6 p.m., tickets uh, are available for pickup uh, in the Condors or front office during normal business hours, and you'll enter on the convention side at 5 o'clock on Saturday night. So uh, just a note on that convention side, 5 o'clock. Tickets available, though, for the game, and you can take pictures with the characters uh, throughout the evening. Moving on. Happened later last week, but Connor Jones has been selected to the ECHL All-Star Classic. Connor Jones, the Connor's a team leader in a scoring up in Oklahoma City right now, doing very well, as we've documented uh, throughout the uh, past couple of weeks uh, with the Oklahoma City Barons. He's unfortunately not going to be able to get to the game uh, for the All-Star Classic Injuries, as we know, up in Oklahoma City are going to limit that, so uh, he won't be able to play in the game, but uh, Connor Jones is still a nice nod for him. We had him on Insider last week, and I think he misses being in Bakersfield. He's enjoying being in Oklahoma City, but I think he misses being in Bakersfield. Well, the one thing that he's got going against him for making the All-Star game is that it was going to be him and his brother going, remember, yes. and pretending to be the same person. Yeah. And they, they can't afford to lose both of them yes. for, the, for the game. Yeah, so Connor Jones' uh, All-Star selection. Condors have had, get this, six all-star selections who have played in the NHL. Three played in the game. Six were selected and eventually went That's on to the bad. NHL. not bad. That's a pretty high percentage. Six out of oh, 42 of the ECHL since 2002 played in Bakersfield. That number, by the way, doesn't include Bobby Robbins, who would be the seventh. He was just on the team that hosted the All-Star game in the uh, Bakersfield versus the ECHL Classic. So uh, seven All-Stars have played in the NHL uh, from the Condors. All right, our last uh, Holtis headline here before we meet up with the Condors head coach, J.F. Full. Michael Kolovacchia acquired from the Utah Grizzlies a day ago for uh, defenseman uh, Corey Finagi. Kolovacchia, 13 points, matching his uh, a jersey number with the Utah Grizzlies uh, in Utah, but more importantly, seven points in his last six games uh, for Kolovecchia played it. Rochester Institute of Technology, 
Brick City, as they call it in RIT, is a highlight from his days uh, in RIT. And if you've never been, and, and I'm assuming nobody listening or watching has ever been to RIT, but if you've never been, Frank Ritter Arena, it's all redone now uh, coming up here in the next year. Uh, but uh, the, the Ritter, as they call it, great environment. It only seats about 2,000, 2,500, but they love their hockey. How old is that Rochester. highlight? That's uh, that's Cameron Burt, so that's that a year Haltigan? and a half ago. Is that Chris Haltigan? That's Chris Haltigan, former Tip of Condor winner as well. Yeah. Dance-off winner, Tip of Condor, a couple years back. That's Bentley, too, by the way, they're playing. And there's Kolovecchia with the tap in. After he missed it the first time, he'll get it on the second effort. There but they have the corner crew there in RIT. And, I mean, I know you know Rochester very well. So You're the, from the, Rochester. The more guys we could have on the team who are familiar with the art of a garbage plate, yes. the better. That's like uh, that's like American poutine. It's better. Is it better? What do you think? It's awesome. It's awesome. And if you don't know what the garbage plate is, you can YouTube it. There's yeah. There's plenty of different varieties, but there's only one original garbage plate, and that's in uh, Rochester. Nick Tahoe's. Yeah. Did he ever trademark that, by the way? Yeah, I believe so. All right. Yeah. All right. That's it for Holt. These headlines uh, here at Condors Unleashed. When we come back, we'll sit down with Condors head coach J.F. Uhl. Also, we'll be joined by Sebastian Sylvest in just a few moments, and Erica Shelton will come on, make some picks as well. It's all on Condors Unleashed live from the Dignity Health Studios inside the Bakersfield, California. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 